Thank you, Daniel. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the September 11th canister, excuse me, uh, CubeVert community meeting. <laughs> I, I run that project as well. Uh, we just started recording. And uh, if you are in attendance, let me drop the uh, community meeting notes into chat now. And please uh, add your name. Uh, Daniel Canister is an uh, application consistent backup orchestration tool. It's a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, and we it's it's fairly new. It's a little less than a year uh, in its sandbox status. And uh, we use it in a, to basically help um, do application consistent backups because just doing it from an infrastructure standpoint on Kubernetes is never good when you have distributed applications such as databases and so on. Um, that's canister with a K for anybody who's interested in canister.io. All right, uh, welcome everybody. So, uh, We'll ask, I think we already have uh, Thomas signed up to introduce himself, but for all of you who are new, please check out uh, kubevert.io, learn about how to uh, add your company as an adopter, follow the project on Twitter or X. Um, we also have the community page linked in here. I think uh, on chat, I just uh, cut and paste the, um, the community meeting notes so you can get to these links directly. And certainly uh, if you want to contribute, join the GitHub project as well. Uh, Thomas, would you like to introduce yourself to the community? Tell us a little bit about how you're involved with Qbert. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I guess um, there's there was already a introduction round uh, from all the IBM guys uh, and I'm also a part of uh, this name of multi-architecture en enablement of uh, Kubevert 4Z. Uh, and I'm on the CDI part right now, uh, and also working um, on the hyperconverged cluster operator next. Um, yeah. Excellent. Happy to meet you guys. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for uh, introducing yourself. And yeah, of course, please ask questions appropriately in the agenda and in GitHub discussions and so on. Um, all right. Well, let's let's get started. We'll take a quick peek at how things are going with the schedule. Yesterday on the tenth, it looks like for CI the lanes for the providers are voting. Daniel, what does this mean? So, um, yeah, voting means that actually, like, um, they are um, prohibiting, any failing lane is prohibiting a merge. Um, so if they are starting to get voting. So um, our general promise is that we want to be compatible with all the three latest Kubernetes providers. As of this release, this would be 131, 130, and 129. Uh, mm -hmm. So the aim for 1.4. Um, and so um, we always have like the process of uh, uh, at the beginning of the release schedule, uh, we are going to start the 131 provider provisioning. So uh, everyone who is uh, uh, familiar with how we are, uh, how we are doing our testing, we have like the Kubert CI project where we um, provision the Kubernetes providers inside, um, uh, inside a testable environment that we can execute on the pods. Um, and so we um, have all uh, SIG lanes, for example, like SIG compute, SIG network, uh, SIG storage, and SIG operator, um, again, running all, all against those uh, three providers. Um, and so whenever like uh, a provider um, is like ready to be able to take it into production somehow, so the testing provider, um, we uh, at, at some point we do uh, make the uh, CI lanes for that provider voting. And that um, I think that has happened already a couple of days ago, but yeah, that actually is like the uh, we have like a milestone where we want to achieve this, um, and that was yesterday. Does that somehow describe in a nutshell? Oh, absolutely. 
Okay. Absolutely. Uh, great. And, and it looks like uh, by this time next week, everything will be started for cutting the beta 140 uh, tag and, and branch and so on. So uh, that's where we are on the schedule. All right. Uh, let me just see if there are any other questions and comment. Uh, Jed mentioned a number of different under kind of status <laughs> for for the CI lanes, I guess. Blocking required, non-optional gating voting. All right. I had not realized that there's a whole kind of state machine <laughs> around CI lanes, but that makes sense. It does. Okay, great. Uh, Move in on. All right, let's take a quick peek at this call for paper schedules, uh, two upcoming conference uh, discussions, uh, but I don't think we're calling out anything specifically for, for KCD's DevOps days, Linux Foundation events, but if you have a, a QBER topic that you want to introduce to the audience that where, where we see most of these types of events are probably the best match for an, a QVert curious audience. Although today, I think those things are including VMware <laughs> World and so on. Um, please, please uh, submit a talk. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we're hyping any specific ones, uh, particularly right now, because I think we just missed everything for uh, kind of the most upcoming KubeCon events towards November and so on, the cutoff dates for those CFPs. All right. Uh, all right, well then here's the open agenda. It looks like Daniel uh, and a few other folks have uh, some from, uh, statements they wanna make. So Daniel, wanna take us away? Uh, and would you like me to give you the screen to share and illustrate this discussion? Yeah, that that would be a good thing. Uh, wait a second. Um, okay. Should I share or do you want to share? No, go, go, ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, so then let's, um, I think, um, wait a second, let me try to find this. Um, if it's easier, I, I will share, not a problem. Um, wait a second, uh, it should be, should be working. Uh, I think it's like just a, just like an, a, a, a quick announcement that we have like a new page, um, uh, which, um, actually, um, makes it more easy to find, uh, like, uh, the contact points of our community somehow. So, um, I'm just going to try to, but because like, uh, the, the sharing on my uh, Linux share. uh, share. <laughs> thing is, is a bit uh, limited. I think I oh, have no, there already is. shared. There is good. It should be, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so actually, just um, this is like a, a generated page from the six YAML that is based inside our community repository. But I think what it gives, or um, uh, what it gives you, is like um, an overview of the user groups and of the special interest groups that we have inside the community. And also like um, uh, contact points, um, like who's uh, who's the chair of the uh, SIG, um, and whether there is probably like a different um, contact point uh, as a mailing list or Slack, and like um, also like the meeting agenda, so that you can see um, what actually um, are the times you can show up. Um, I yeah, I think. Even we have like a Zoom links to the meetings. For example, like in the in the bottom, you can see the Kubernetes CI operations group, which I am uh, one of the chairs of, and we have like meetings on Monday and on Wednesday uh, every morning and CET. Um, so so that's uh, that's what you what you can where you can find like if you if you don't want to look at the Google Calendar, then you should also be able to to find it here. And like uh, the find the contact points of every SIG um, in a nutshell. I hope that this um, explains um, uh, it, it enough um, so that that everyone has an overview. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit small for sharing, but that's okay. Um, you had a next step. Do you want to tell us about that too? 
Oh yeah, yeah. The thing is that currently everyone who changes something at the six YAML uh, needs to take an additional step in uh, executing some uh, make um, goal, make target on on the repository so that this page gets updated. Um, we are planning to create a job that will check uh, whenever someone forgets that, so that uh, they are reminded to do that, which I think would be. Um, would be a good thing. So, yeah, I mean, it can be uh, forgotten easily since this uh, this SIG list uh, generation is not that long in action. So I figure that might make sense that we add another check uh, whenever someone is changing SIG YAML inside the community repository. All right. Thank you. Uh, of course, folks, let us know if there are any questions, comments, or concerns in the chat or, or uh, unmute. Uh, looks like we're on to the next agenda item. And forgive me, I can't remember. Is L. Yarwood, is that Larry Yarwood? I, I don't recall. Uh, no, it's Lee. Hi. Hi, Lee. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Hi. So um, I, I don't really need to share my screen for this because I'll, I'll just be clicking on links. Okay. Um, but yeah, just to introduce the topic, there is a mailing list post that's the first link um, here where I've kind of tried to set out um, what I'm trying to kind of figure out um, here. But um, in short, uh, an, a pending Windows 11 update um, is going to start um, enabling BitLocker encryption um, within Windows 11 guests by default. <laughs> um, and uh, downstream QE at Red Hat actually discovered that um, in order for this to work going forward, um, we need VMs to capture EFI state as well as a VTPM state. Um, EFI state wasn't previously a known requirement uh, for Windows 11. Um, EFI itself and Secure Boot was, but we didn't realize we had to capture state as well. Um, and without this, um, after a reboot, Windows 11 um guess will not boot, I will, will not boot. yeah will not be <laughs> um so uh for um you know straightforward vms vanilla vms um we do have a way of expressing this uh the requirement of efi persistence um through the vm api that's fine um with the instance type api that i work on uh, and with preferences However, uh, we do not. Um, it was a, an oversight with the original design of the API. Um, instead of modeling um, basically the, the EFI struct that we have within the VM, within the preference API, um, we chose Booleans and we just can't model it. Um, well, we couldn't model it um, until recently on main. Um, we've landed um, an improvement on main. Um, and uh, the ask here is um, if it would be possible to backport this as well. Um, mm -hmm. Our own wording in the second uh, link uh, mm -hmm. for the um, release branching backporting guide is intentionally vague around um, feature backports, um, and it's a kind of uh, it's up to the community and ma maintainers really to kind of decide if um, by backporting a feature um, we are resolving a, a worthy kind of bug, um, if we should do it or not. So. Um, in my opinion, because of the impact of this and because once you get into that state of being unable to boot, there's kind of no recovery mechanism. Right. I would like to see us backport this. Um, we can then fix the common instance types project that provides the preference resources. Um, but ultimately, we just we need we need it, um, the instance type API to be fixed in Qvert. Um, so yeah. Um, that that's my position. I'd like to do this. It's an additive thing. It's pretty, you know, self-contained. Um, there's definitely learnings going forward about API design here. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. any any folks um, morally against it? Any kind of real real concerns here? I, I know with other projects and other kind of communities, stuff like this doesn't typically get backported. Um, but I think the structure of the project and you know the um, the kind of technical kind of aspect here we, we can potentially do this it's yeah it, it's more if anyone's kind of morally against this or it, it, there's something that i haven't thought of here from my oh. side i mean yeah sorry if if possible I and mean, from my side i don't see a, a, an issue with backporting this but um, i mean we need to formalize uh, a bug around it um 
And um, the question is, uh, how widely was this functionality used in the previous uh, previous release? So third link is a bug that I wrote up about this upstream. Um, it, it's a bit vague. It's not, you know, amazing, but um, it kind of captures what I've just spoken through, hopefully. It is closed because the, the main um, PR landed and automatically closed this. Um, and in terms of how widely this is used, so the, the Windows 11 preferences have been shipped um, for, I, I want to say, two or three releases now. Um, downstream by default, upstream, they're not shipped by default yet. We are trying to enable default deployment um, for Kiva 1.4. Um, so with a red hat on, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a couple of releases What uh, while these preferences have been out there. Um, and it's, yeah, the, it's the recent update and the kind of change in behavior from Microsoft to Windows 11 is what's causing the headache here, really. It's, and the fact that we missed the requirement that um, EFI state be captured as well. Um, yeah, if, if, if that was known previously, we would have probably modeled it differently within mm -hmm. the API. Um, so yeah. As, as I like to say to lots of people in my family, when they're exasperated about whatever is that going on in the world, what matters is what we do now <laughs> going forward uh, rather than looking backwards. However, uh, I guess Lee, the, the only question I have is the biggest concern for, for a retroactive thing would be making sure that there's adequate testing to prove that there's no unforeseen regressions, right? So uh, what's the test plan look like? Uh, the, the upstream test plan for this, um, within Qubit itself, um, we don't do any uh, specific Windows validation um, within Qubit, Qubit, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. within Qubit common instance types. Um, we upstream, we only test against validation OS that's like a minimal representation of Windows um, that's freely available. Uh, they ship it for free for testing. And does um, it have TPM and everything else? Yeah, so I, uh, okay. yeah, um, I, I don't think it, it doesn't have the same requirements. So you can't enable. Yeah, of it course, it's not, it's not. Yeah, but yeah, you, you we can enable EFI persistence and make sure that it is still able to boot at least. Um, the, yeah, we can't test Windows 11 upstream because of licensing, um, but we right. we do do it downstream at Red Hat. Right, 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 right. So your current test plan will cover, I guess, this. Proxy, oh, I, that's probably not the best term, but that 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 Windows instance that is testable. Yeah, validation OS. Yeah, so as it, it soon as um, the change is available, um, actually, we're already testing it up in main for common instance types because that's already landed as well. So okay, well, yeah, we, we've already tested it there. But as soon as it's if this is backported, as soon as the change in the equivalent common instance types branch lands, then validation OS tests will run, um, and. Yeah, that's just a sanity check. It's not the same use I, case I exactly, but yeah. Yeah, that seems to to make sense. Uh, one or two questions uh, to see if any other people have uh, inputs as well as uh, one person asking about workarounds. So um, I don't know, Lee, if you can address some of the questions here in the chat. Yeah, sorry. Um, so Vladix asked, Lubo and Jed, any workaround available? Um, so the only the only workaround is with the initial creation of the of the VM um, to re request EFI persistence within the VM itself within the VM spec. Um, you can't do it after the fact. So if you create a VM using yeah. the Windows eleven preference um, and then reboot it, there's no getting back from that state. Um, thus the kind of need to backport here. If we could work around it by just after the fact adding it into the VM yeah, yeah. spec, that I, I wouldn't be asking for a backport. Um it's just right. that that whole um with that unfortunately. So that was to Lubo's question. And then Jed, yeah, if I think might be a Windows bug fix by August thirteenth, Windows update, but it still makes sense to have the IP. I'm not sure what you mean there, Jed. It is there do you think this has been fixed with Windows um, 11? Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm not sure if they, uh, that thing was intentional, uh, requiring EFI to be persistent all of a sudden for BitLocker to um, work. But I, I still think it makes sense to have oh, yeah. EFI persistent in a template, absolutely. 
Yeah, so yeah, this is specifically for instance types and preferences. But yeah, go on, sorry. Hey, Haley, I have a follow-up question. So you mentioned this uh, if, uh, this option is out there since last three releases. Um, is that the alpha version of the API or is the beta version available since last three releases? Um, in, so what I was referring to there was the Windows 11 preference being shipped by common instance types. Um, the the instance type API um, has never supported or been able to express EFI persistence. Um, so that's always been a gap. Um, the, the, the issue here is that the Windows 11 preference that we currently ship um, can't express that as well because it's missing in the API. So by providing it in the API and backporting it, then we can add it into the preference. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if that makes sense. I, I understand. So. Yeah, that that makes sense. Although what I'm uh, curious about is that Windows uh, preference that was shipped, right? Um, how much of it uh, in last three releases? How what does it look like in terms of alpha and beta uh, version of that CR being shipped? So if if the version is in alpha, then then I think we would have different um, uh, different way of backporting things versus if if the version of that CR was in in beta, right? Uh, that that's why I'm raising this question. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, they're, they're two separate things. Like the, the the Windows 11 preference is a is an object um, using the instance type API. Um, so it's currently using the v1 beta one version of the instance type API, um, and that has been v1 beta one. Oh god, you're testing me here. Like yeah, for three <laughs> releases or so, I think, off the top of my head. Um, yeah, and in terms of backporting, like I'm, I'm only really expecting us to backport for as many supported releases as we have have upstream, um, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah the, the the common instance types part of this and the the resources defined in that project aren't versioned in alpha, beta, GA, or anything. They're not versioned in that fashion. Um, but the API is, and yeah, for for the sake of this discussion, it's V1 beta one. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I think if if it is V1 beta one since three releases, then yeah, I would definitely say uh, makes sense to backport. Yeah, I I would potentially backport this if it was V1 to be honest, because it is fixing a, a quite a large hole. Um, like the the original options are, are going to be deprecated in main. Um. And so this new um, option, uh, new field in the API is just additive. It just sits alongside the existing ones. Um, well, at least in main, they're deprecated and removed in the future. But um, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, I, I, oh, I definitely think v1 and v1 beta one definitely uh, backporting. It makes sense for v1 alpha one. I'm not so sure because I think the recommendation is that anything that is in v1 alpha one um, should not potentially be used in, in production should just only be used for um, trial error purposes. So that, that is why I think the version of API matters for that custom resources that are uh, being shipped, uh, if, if that thought process makes sense. But since, since it's, it is in beta since few releases, I yeah, think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a valid thing. Thank you. And yeah, I, I I am planning to get it to V1 as soon as I can. Um, there's one or two things in 1.4 that we want to fix, uh, but hopefully by 1.5 it will, will be to V1. So yeah, thank you for that point. Cool. cool. I'm I'm not seeing any objections massively. In no, you've seen some. Uh, so yeah, seen so some I'll... improvements actually. So that that's that's good feedback. Uh, Lee, uh, anything else we should address? Although I do think. Uh, we saw one other comment here about a similar backport um, occurrence. Yeah, it's, it seems like we've we've had something like this in the past, so and chose the backport. So that's good information as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've, unless there's any objections, 
last minute objections I th I'm going to try and push ahead with this and I'll reach out to some folks if I haven't already um, talk to you about it to try and get approval um, and go that way thank you all uh, shall we move on to our next uh, open agenda item the overall direction of DRA and QBird I can talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so um, in last couple of um, releases, we've been discussing um, device supports for for um, resources that could be expressed via the, the DRA API. So just for context, um, uh, DRA is dynamic resource allocation. It's a new uh, API being worked on in Kubernetes modeled on uh, persistent uh, volume claims. The idea is that if you have host devices like uh, GPUs, uh, other accelerators, networking devices, or maybe any other PCI devices, um, the current way of using device plugins is not, uh, has, has some issues that is um, potentially being solved by, uh, by the, the DRA API. So mm -hmm. obviously we would like to have support for that in, in Kubeword. And I wanted to get the community's um, you know, thoughts on you know, how that um, discussion is going on. I, I did see there was a, a PR open with some proposed API changes, although uh, the design doc for, for that API was, uh, was not um, approved. So, <clears throat> Internally, we are uh, planning on working on on this um, DR API for Kubeword for our own fork, and we would really like to get uh, community alignment before, you know, uh, a lot of uh, time and code has been invested. So, just wanted to get a sense if folks are here, uh, what would be the timeline of this feature, and uh, you know, any other feedback that helps in in taking this forward. Um, uh, so, yeah, sorry, Alicia, go ahead. You first. No, Ale, I just wanted to ask you if you had the chance to look at the um, at the GSOC project about the array. So, um, yeah. we had, yeah, so Sebastian presented like, I think, three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a chance to follow that uh, mm -hmm. API. A lot of the, um, you know, decisions made in, in that POC make sense. Mm -hmm. um, we are finding a couple issues with, with the API in, in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, the newer versions of DRA allow for um, yeah. some more use cases, which is not mm -hmm. covered in this uh, POC. So um, <clears throat> if it makes sense, uh, I can add those enhancements to the design doc, and we can probably take this POC, cherry pick the commits and, and move it forward in, in the way that achieves those use cases. Uh, yeah, um, there is also a new repo in Hubert organization that contains the, um, uh, the DRA driver for, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, I will have a, a second look to the to the um, to the proposal, but uh, yeah, if uh, we follow mostly what you uh, propose also in the in the in the design document, so definitely if you yeah. can if you can move forward to um, get the align, it will be great. Okay, yeah, um, I think. Uh, my colleague and I are working on this, and for them, the, this time zone is not. Uh, uh, this time of the meeting is not working, so I wonder if, uh, if we want to set up any other working meeting just for um, DRA. My hope is that for release one point four, we can get at least an alpha version of of DRA support out. Um, and for that to happen, I think you'll have to focus a lot on, on ironing out the design. So just wondering if if we have an appetite for such a call. Uh, well, in which time zone are your colleagues? Um, Pacific. Okay. 
yeah, it will be great. It will be very interesting to 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 discuss the area. Yeah. I will be at least interested in the discussion. So. Okay. But if this could happen after you update uh, the uh, the proposal, so have a chance to you know to align. Yeah, yeah. My I'm targeting uh, updating the proposal this week or most likely early next next week Monday or something. So uh, yeah, we'll update the proposal, have community feedback there, and then probably set up a follow up if needed from the proposal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Ali, one last thing. Uh, so there is a PR from Victor also um, for Incubor CI. I'm not sure if you have seen that as well. Uh, it's basically enabling uh, Cubor CI for the array. So um, uh, That I have not seen, actually. If you can link me that PR. That yeah, I, I, I will put it in the notes. Um, I okay. think it still requires some, some work but um, for, for merging, but at least uh, uh, it has been used for uh, uh, for for the project uh, because it enables really QRCI for, with the array, so it's it's kind of nice. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, very helpful. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there was a question about whether this is generally available DRA, and uh, looks like it's still an alpha as of one three zero. Um. Yeah, I can share more light. So DRA is not GA. As of 1.30, it was in alpha. Uh, 1.31, I think, again, in alpha. But they have gotten the API solidified uh, to a point where they feel comfortable beta is going to be uh, next release if nothing uh, else comes up. So the current state of the API uh, seems like something we can build on top of. And <clears throat> even if we build on top of an alpha um, feature from Kubernetes, we will have our own feature gate uh, for KubeBird. So the, the design will incorporate uh, how we'll be able to move from, let's say, alpha uh, version of the DRA API to beta version. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and I think it is important for us to try it out in uh, as soon as we can, because if there are use cases which the the array features are not um, accounting for, let's say for KubeWord specifically, then we can share that concrete feedback from our trials um, in, in in the current state. So um, I think that that's my overall uh, stance on on this. All right, thank you. Let's move on to the next uh, topic. Uh, enabling Go Image CDI functional tests for ARM and S390. Hi. Yeah, we um, observed that um, Go Image uh, functional tests for CDI uh, were not building for ARM and S390X. That accounts for three out of uh, nine functional tests, and um, in order to you know get this thing released, we probably want to implement those as well as the uh, ETE and unit tests. Um, the uh, Go image uh, functionality is in a repository which has been archived for several years, and is uh, it's not clear that it's going to be. Uh, extended to support uh, multi-arch. So um, I think the proposal is to make those particular tests similar to the other six tests um, that um, are relevant to uh, ARM and S390X. So, um, but we're going to want to do a uh, design exercise, dig into the code some more and see what it is we actually want to do. But anyone that's been involved with that, um, I hope you get in touch with uh, with the ARM end of it. I've talked to Alexander Vels um, because he's been the most um, uh, involved in getting things running on ARM for CDI. So, but uh, if any if anyone else would like um, in, input in, into a, a design exercise that would be 
good. I don't think it's a huge thing. So, yeah, I think, I think there's a new uh, library instead of Go Image, um, something OCI image or image OCI, one of the two. Um, I believe there's a link in the archive repository to the new one. Um, I played around with it a little bit um, and I couldn't get it to work. I, I forget exactly why. Uh, so I, I think, you know, your proposal to do it the same as the other ones is probably correct. So. Yeah, um, this is our, our main focus right now is getting the nightly builds in with uh, just the uh, unit tests, but this would be a, uh, you know, the next phase. So, um, so this doesn't have the hot urgency around it that, um, uh, David's PR does, for example. So, but this is fun. Okay. Well, if, if, if there's anything that needs a review or something, just, you know, ping me, I'll, I'm pretty good usually about looking at stuff. So thanks so much. I really appreciate your help. Okay. Now moving on to the floor. Uh, oh, other questions, comments, or concerns? Please continue. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm from ARM. So does the the function test need to run ARM server? Mm -hmm. uh, hello. Uh, so fill case. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, it's good to see that you are enabling the Go image CDI function test for ARM. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's 390X architecture. So, uh, my question is, does the, the, a Go image CDI functional test need to run on um, 64 servers? Yes. Yes. Uh, they, they, they would use within the CI CD um, suite of, uh, of clusters, um, there's a facility to specify an external cluster. Um, so, uh, at IBM, we've we've enabled a cloud server on S three ninety X hosts to serve as the um, the test cluster there, and um, there's I believe there's plans for um, a similar functionality set up for ARM sixty four. Um, I know the nightlies get put up, but um, it's not clear how they're being test tested on the arm side so okay so uh, if you need any help on that you can give me a message oh great thanks so much <laughs> yeah excellent thank you and Howlin, i believe you have the next topic introducing the cubevert maintainer talk for kubecon china uh yes, <clears throat> okay. Hi everyone. Uh, so, uh, I just use the Qubit maintainer talk in Kubicon China, maybe two week, three weeks ago. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, there are around forty audience joining this uh maintainer talk. And um, in this talk, we introduce some new features on release uh, 1.1 .1 to 1 1.3 <clears throat> uh, and also some uh, updates in the community like special interest group and uh, and, and some some other things uh, and it's good to see that many many chinese developer have interest in on the qbvert and after the presentation, um, some audience come and talk with me, say that their company started to use QPVert to manage their workload, 
like Meituan. Uh, it's a very large company in China. And this, uh, the people say that there are about mm, uh, 4,000 server are managed by QBvert uh, in their company. Hmm. Mm. Um, and uh, they have some questions. One is uh, the, uh, I paste the link there here. So they will want to see if anyone can can reply this this issue. Um, yeah, I, I just saw this and I um I pinged the, the maintainer of it. Ah. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And another one is uh, uh, some some audience ask me uh, about migrate the VM well VM to QBvert. So I and uh, uh, I think there's a trend. Many company want to migrate their VM well VM to some other platforms. Uh, I joined the Open Infra Asia. Uh, last week, uh, and uh, in the keynote, I say uh, there is a presentation on how to do live migration from VM. Well, uh, there is a tour help people to live migrate their VM from uh, VM. Well, to OpenStack. So I'm not sure if um. If there is tours, uh, tour help us to to migrate the VM from VM, VM well to QBvert, and uh, I think Alexander used to give me a link on uh, about the tour, right? Yes, um, yes. Red Hat productizes that project uh, into what we call the migration toolkit for virtualization. Um, and it, it's mostly maintained by Red Hat as well. So. Oh, yeah. So if there, uh, it would be good if we can have a blog to, uh, or a document to introduce how to migrate VM well, VM to QBvert. Uh, yes, and uh, <clears throat> if, and there are uh, the following part is some hot topics in QBCon China. The first one is about AI and uh, LLVM, <clears throat> like how to optimize cloud infrastructure to better support AI and LLVM training, development, and operations. And the second one is uh, about web assembly. <clears throat> and it's how to use how to run LLVM while web assembling on different platforms. And then the last one is Surface Mesh. It's many topics, topics about Istio and uh, server discovering or performance uh, improvements while eBPF and more. Yeah, that's all about the QB, uh, the KubeCon China. And I also share uh, two, two pictures in the, uh, in the, in the channel, in the Zoom chat channel. Oh. The image is, is about the, the maintainer talk. Yeah. Yeah, That's I have all. a question. Uh, did anyone mm -hmm. share the, their experience uh, with QBert on AI or WebAssembly? Because um, it's difficult to generally to, to have this kind of uh, how, how people really use QBert with those uh, on those area. Uh, was more questions or were somebody uh, that really actually tried? Uh, <clears throat> there, uh, there are many presentation about the experience on AI and the web assembling. Uh, 
also include many demonstration, but in terms of uh, like training or uh, using AI on QBvert, uh, there is no, no topic or discussion about that. Yeah, because I mean, in KubeCon Cube AU, yeah, that was in in March. Uh, yeah, there was people uh -huh. really interested uh, how to use it, but n nobody really tried. Uh, so it was mostly I don't know. Um, I was curious if if anyone in China has actually shared that experience. Okay, so, um, so. If you are interested on that, uh, mm -hmm. there are some presentation. Uh, you can see the presentations in the official website, mm -hmm. and uh, there uh, you can download the PPT there. And I think uh, you can also see the presentation in the YouTube, but most of the presentation are in Chinese. Yeah. Uh, it was more, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. if it's not about Hubert, yeah, sure. There was also a lot of presentation about AI, yeah. but uh, combined with, with virtualization, I mean, there was actually some presentation combined with virtualization or? Uh, combined with? Qbert or virtualization, AI and WebAssembly or? No, no, there is okay. only one presentation uh, related to QBvert. It's the QBvert maintainer talk. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how I added the uh, forklift project link here for the migration tool that uh, Red Hat OEMs with support. I think that is the 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 biggest issue uh, with any migration is that who's going to support it, and what happens if something goes wrong? Right, community support may not be the best answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you for all that. Uh, looking at the time, we're we're down to the last five minutes. Uh, I'm willing to go a little bit over so that we can do kind of some of the at least a really abbreviated bug scrub and pull request review. But uh, Daniel, why don't we finish up these uh, last two topics? Actually, you know, um, I, it's just a reminder that that we have talked about like renaming the label say code quality to something else because um, this is like. Um, uh, so there is no sick code quality, and therefore there should also be no label sick code quality. And I, uh, <laughs> um, I was just doing this, uh, like just renaming the label from one to the other. Um, I, I figure this is like um, it's a, like a type cleanup or kind cleanup. I'm not sure exactly what what I renamed it to, but it should be making more sense. Um, and the other one that I was wanting to point out was that I have created an issue template to um, fetch flaky or to to uh, down uh, to to um, to create uh, issues for flaky tests and i would just uh, i think like the uh, the discussion has settled on that one uh, i'm just looking for like someone who probably is okay with approving it so um yeah that that's just this and that's all for me actually <laughs> mm -hmm. all right Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, poll request. It looks like we've got one, two, three. All right. Well, let's just start from the top. Yeah. The first two are for me. Um, and the first one is a little bit more critical. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a prerequisite to run the unit test on uh, S390X. And uh, mm -hmm. for this, I um, removed Basil, because on, on Z, we don't have Basil uh, also in the near future, future. And Basil is not really necessary for unit tests. So um, this just um, that makes sense. Not, does not use Basil and would be nice to, to have it merged uh, ASAP. Yeah. And after that, the unit tests work. And the next one um, 
is about releasing nightlies for S390, uh, S390X. This is also a prerequisite for it. Mm -hmm. It uh, introduces some um, environmental variable uh, additions to support um, this architecture, the S390X arch architecture. Right, cool. It looks like you've nominated reviewers on both of these already. Uh, well, I didn't do it manually. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free to CC me on the unit plus one. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, shall we move on? For controller services, add tests for computing hot plug tolerations. Yes, that would be mine. Uh, it's rather simple. Uh, I think Alex is here. He already uh, LGTM'd it. Pretty much just adding the uh, unit tests for checking whether uh, hot plug tolerations are being added correctly. Uh, it didn't exist prior to that. So uh, this needs some attention. Yeah, yeah what's the key? Okay. And a uh, Cube generated client set. Yes, this is part of uh, a bigger change to um, well, both replace um, GoMock as well as uh, well, just rewrite the tests for uh, admitter related uh, unit tests. Uh, just needed an approval there, also a GTM. So attention as well. Okay. All right. Can I uh, can I just chime in real quick with respect to reviewers? I was just wanting to um, to to just uh, just give my note uh, note on that please. one. So actually, normally uh, Prow actually nominates reviewers on pull requests. So it does it automatically generated or based on owner's files that are present in the project folder. So uh, if you want to actually nominate a specific reviewer, you would have to like uh, slash CC the reviewer you want if you want someone spe uh, specialized on that one. So um, I would recommend uh, to do that if, you're, if you need someone's special attention. Awesome, thank you. All right, moving onwards. Uh, I think I have told other people that based upon my organizational permissions, my my organization doesn't let me access the Qvert mailing list. So, uh, Daniel, is there? Could you call out anything if 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 you could? Otherwise, I typically skip this, and I apologize profusely. Uh, but we'll take a quick peek at Bug Scrub in the meantime. And. Daniel, I think I see you are on top of flaky tests as per usual. Dynamic. Yeah, actually, we've created a couple of I've created an, two issues today because like we have just noticed um, two during this USB reader um, um, like uh, panic um, that we were trying to fix. Uh, we noticed that there were a couple of uh, flaky tests that we uh, that we created issues for. So um, just um, as a tracker, so that we have them um, and and that we can work on them. That's the only thing. With respect to um, I think to the mailing list, um, I think uh, we are pretty much covered um, from Thank you. from what I can see at least. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, and for your to. Uh... Do we need to triage them further? I doubt it. All right. Actually, I didn't. I didn't have a look at that, so um, I must rely on your <laughs> on your okay. look at, at the All right. Let's take a quick peek then. Uh, these are the two that you you just opened, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. And we're looking for assignees. Um, I've uh, assigned at least Victor because he has the experience from what I faintly remember with the USB reader and we had like the discussion going on on the other PR so I think it should be okay to um, to CC him on that one and um, All right, yeah. cool. and uh, same thing with guest memory inside VMI yeah yeah I think so um, we're 
So I think we um, I've, um, we have to discuss with Brian and Lubo whether we want to take this directly into quarantine because it has shows a lot of impact on the on the last two weeks. Got it. All right. Thank you. Support dynamic PVC provision and support migration for unshared or not shared PVCs. I would I would at least expect that there should be like a six storage label on that one. Um, uh, I can not... have a look and reply. I don't think we support this at all. So. And yeah. look at here, we're, we're seeing Doc Dosu, right? Uh, trying to jump in and give an answer. Dosu Bob. But uh, I don't know him, but I, I will have a look tomorrow. No, Alici, uh, that's uh, AI, uh, a service. Okay, that... great. <laughs> so mileage may vary and may be hallucinogenic, yes. but nevertheless, um, may also get a hit. Don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah I appreciate, appreciate you taking a look, Alici. Yeah, yeah and... it's, um, it's about migration. So. And Alice, if you if you can take a look whether the dozer bot talks nonsense or not, that would be a great help, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Daniel, that's that's a matter of basically voting up or down. I mean, thumbs up or yeah. thumbs on this, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. From the scrolling, it seems like a mixture of the code and the um, and the user guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if that's the case, when you review this leche, please thumbs down it if if it's yeah. not even anywhere close, right? Or I will, I will. thank you so much. Uh, all right. Oh no, I just looked at that one. Remove logic of mutating the clones for mutating webhooks. Default values for target, that makes sense, but it should be handled by the clones controller instead. Hmm. And Dosu bot tries to help. <laughs> that's not, yeah, I don't think that's uh, helpful. Um, I think the person that created this issue is gonna fix it themselves. This is probably just to track it. Uh, thank you, Michael. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Michael. Okay, please, please assign to yourself. Um, all right, uh, is this also related? Uh, yeah, I've opened a bunch of these, so you can skip them. All right, one, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Six storage tips quarantined, quarantined due to a bug. Uh, Itamar, sorry, one thing about the other issues is. Are those good first issues? Do you think could be? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I guess that some some of them are. Um, but yeah, thanks for for this note. I'll, I'll go over them and, and assign it if it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, thanks. Thank Sometimes there are people. I mean, if you don't have time and you don't plan to work that immediately, it would be nice to label them. Yeah, great suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too. All right. All right. Sig storage test quarantine due to a bug. Yeah, I just assigned this to myself. I forgot to do it. <laughs> no worries. And again, uh, for everybody, if Dosu Butt is not doing a good job, please give it that feedback. I don't guarantee it'll get less noisy, but nevertheless. Um Tools folder fails. Oh, uh, is this also a, a good first issue? Looks like this game updated. So, uh, would, is this worth reviewing? Um, yeah, basically, um, as it says, it doesn't even build and it has uh, some unit tests that can't run because it doesn't have the uh, sweet test file. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing urgent, but yeah. yeah. All right, cool. And uh, please, please tell those who bought thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, 
Daniel, report after sweep failed. Looks like, all right, it's starting to look like uh, some of these are getting, all right, now let's keep, let's keep doing the triage. So Daniel, it looks like you've identified a fix. Yes, exactly. Sorry, you double muted, so I I didn't I couldn't speak up. Um, yeah, exactly. Actually, this will get closed uh, when the fix for that is getting merged, so that should be okay. All right, cool. Thank you. VM clone looks like this one has some discussion on it. Let's see if it's not just the bot. All right. Restored clone PVC will not is not owned by the virtual machine or at all. Ooh. All right, we'll see what her looks like a near miss. <laughs> So still need a discussion. All right. Outside. Yeah, I think this is an active. Yeah. Active yeah, it looks like it's underway. All right. Thank you. Um, vert control or vert CTO. Uh, does not infer data volumes that import from a source other than a PVC. OK. Well, what other source are they talking about? Oh, via URL, perhaps? I see. Yeah, they want it over the network. Hmm, anybody have uh, an opinion or comment on this? He wants to import from a, from Quay via URL. All right, no, no, no takers on this one. Right. We'll, we'll let this one go for right now. It doesn't look to be incredibly. Early. It's probably a tracker for himself. Ah, okay. Uh, should I reassign it back to that person? Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me see, am I logged in or am I? It will work on it nevertheless, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And I don't have the ability to reassign, but I will add a comment. There is a PR here. So uh, I already posted a PR and can fix this. So yes, uh, was a tracker for myself. Oh yeah, please, please. all right. I, I won't do, I won't add in, but if you would do the need pull, thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, does that apply to this one as well? Log verbosity for vert CTL? Um, I think the person who merged the PR, which broke this, but no answer yet. All right, you're taking a look. So I think uh, I might probably drop off at this point and we'll move on to the next agenda item. Although we only went basically two days back. Here we should go all the way back. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there to a week. Um, Daniel, SIG storage lanes, need this reviewed? Double muted, I imagine. Let's take a look while he's coming. Yeah, true. Out. I accidentally pressed the mute button. <laughs> no <laughs> worries. Yeah. yeah, this is something that uh, I think Alex and others have have been um, thinking about working on. All right, and and I think there is like already like discussion going on the, the, on the Cuba Dev mailing list, and I think Alex already created a PR on that one. Yeah, I'm looking into that. You can assign it to me. 
I apologize. It looks like I do not have the ability to assign things. Okay, I'll just say that. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> PR cannot be merged without unit test execution. Yeah, so this one is mine assigned to Alex. Uh, this issue uh, talks about that you could open a PR, create a new package, uh, create unit tests for it. But if you forget to add just one little file, then they won't run. Mm -hmm. And there was some protection against this scenario uh, done by Alex. He's uh, also fixing it as we speak. Thank you, Alex. All right. Migration pended because active pods could not be updated. VM migrate to another node. CR pending. One completes, the other's running. VM can be migrated twice. I am not sure I understand this one. Oh, I see. So I imagine the second one is first one, the first migration running, the second one is pending and just holding, and the, he expects both. I see. I don't, well, that's a conflict or so the second one have to be renamed or something like that, which I can understand is not potentially done automatically. So that seems to be the request because active pods not updated. Hmm. I don't know who can uh, attend to this or respond to it. Any anybody have a candidate or idea who we can even ping on this? I'll have a look. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, then we'll do this as the last kind of triage for today. Bert launcher hangs due to guest console log. Yikes. Hmm. Who gave this a thumb up? No. Um. Those who bot gave it a thumbs up. I don't understand why. Okay. Uh, anyone out out there who might be able to identify someone in who can take a look at this? All right. We'll uh, we'll let this one hold for now. Mm -hmm. You could assign Simone. Uh, would you be able to do it's, that? I am not. Tirabushi. Daniel, would you please assist me if you could? Uh, which is it? Is it that twelve seven seven one, right? Yes. And uh, who do you want? Oh, uh, Felix identified Tirabushi. I'm probably the worst person with names, but uh, uh, it's in the chat, Daniel. And thank you for your help, of course. Okay, this is a long one. I think uh, we will stop there since uh, we're talking about things that have comments on it, look active, and they're a week ago. So we will stop there. Flaky text 
fixes. Daniel, uh, I imagine you might be able to summar the, summarize this. Is there anything we want to uh, address here in the community meeting? I think we talked about this one. Sorry, I was distracted by by trying to uh, assign the issue. Can we repeat <laughs> yeah, the I know. Time for that? No worries, no worries. Um, these ah, last... yeah. Now, now I understand. So uh, the pull request uh, that we opened, like, um, um, wait a second, that's a... Um, these are flaky tests related, it appears. Yeah, exactly. These are just like um, trackers mm. that we can that we can work on. Um, cool. On the pull requests themselves. Exactly. And just basically looking at the comments on things, going back at least a week or two, uh, looks like all of these are being addressed, uh, or or we actually have talked about them a little bit earlier today. So I think we will call this one done. All right. Uh, I haven't seen anything else in the Zoom chat. We've been pretty good staying on top of it. So I think we have reached the end of our agenda today. Any final questions, comments, or concerns, folks? No. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us to the end. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Mark, Bye. for leading the meeting. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, thank you very nice. much. Bye-bye. Bye. See you all. Okay. Bye-bye. Leave.